today's topic is solo hosts, and we'll start here in Lothric Castle. As any invader knows at this point in the game's life cycle, running into a gratuity of solo hosts is inevitable. For invasions, it seems you can have activity or quality, but never both. I see that they've killed all the enemies up here, so I decide to head on down, see where they're at. And lo and behold, Tears Guy. At soul level 75, Tears doesn't surprise me. He buffs. I put on my ring for more damage. And I'm ready to straight sword duel. Fun fact, this dark build is not only basic, but it is also ineffective. And by that I mean there are better ways to make a dark build at soul level 75. I see that he's got a parry tool, which does make me wary. So I'm kind of trying to delay my attacks a little bit out of hits done. Because he doesn't seem like the mashing type. And he's not, because he knows how to do the pseudo combo. At this point, I imagine he's a little frustrated from me mashing into him. And then, he Barker Bomb baits me. And I didn't think he'd be smart enough to do it, but he was. But then I asked, are you smart enough to not meet my getup? And the answer was no. And it's over. Sorry, Blue. Just a little too late. GG's. Now, as I've said, this is a dark build at soul level 75, and that's not really something I usually do. The dark build I only really reserve if I'm doing a super optimized dark sorcerer or pyro or something, but I just felt like I wanted to try it out at this soul level and see how effective it was. And trying to optimize a dark build below soul level like 90 is hard. There's nothing new or interesting about it. It's pretty basic. But sometimes you just want to hit R1 and do dark damage to people. And that is something we can all get behind. Vote Dark Build 2020. If it takes me longer than like 15 seconds to find a solo host, I'm less likely to let them live. As I'm searching for the host here, I find him on the bridge, just sprawled out like this. So we wave. And then we buff. And, uh, I get hit a lot. I get hit a lot. This was my first invasion back after a while, so I gave myself a little leeway. But, uh, luckily, I don't think this guy knows how to space. And by that I mean he's telegraphing all of his attacks with these twin blades. So I'm just kind of taking his measure here. And I don't heal for whatever reason. Usually I don't heal just to prevent them from healing, because usually people have their own codes of honor. I figure that if I can just bide my time and do straight sword garbage, then I'll just kind of win by default. And you know what? That is exactly what ends up happening. I try a couple firebombs. He switches to the curved swords to try to chase me down, but I use the hand axe as an unreactable mix-up. GG's. On most of my builds at this soul level, I try to account for having the obscuring ring in at least one ring slot at the beginning of every invasion, except for something incredibly ring-reliant like a pyro. And the obscuring ring is just... it's, it's probably the best ring for an invader, just hands down. And this is nothing new. We've been extolling the virtues of the Obscuring Ring for five years now. It is almost always to your benefit to know where a gank is before they know where you are, but as you can probably guess, this host is not part of a gank. When I see this guy alone, I figure I could just try to finish him off. I give this guy the End of Hunter Charm plunge attack, 
just kind of chase him down a little bit. And then I'm using this hand axe to just kind of catch his rolls or have something faster than a straight sword, which is already quite fast. And I finish him unusually quickly. Now this guy was probably just playing through the level, so I did feel a little bad, but if I'm going through a loading screen, I might as well make it worth my time. Whoops. Sorry, Blue. Before this next invasion, I do have a confession to make. Most of my builds uh, in the past year have been sorcerers and mages of varying types and configurations with varying amounts of melee involvement. And honestly, it never paid off in Dark Souls 3 because invading with sorcery is a challenge and sometimes even a disadvantage. I have seen many successful sorcerer invaders, however, I never quite got the hang of it. This host, however, does not have to worry about any of the disadvantages that sorcery may have in an invasion. So you can imagine what's going to happen here. In all honesty, this player is surprisingly aggressive for a mage. I've made a build that was very similar to this, and so has Chase the Bro and many, many others. But uh, he's perfectly willing to use R1s, which is more than you can say of many, many sorcerer players. Here my plan is to just try to get a rolling attack or run around him and get something started. But he is absolutely content to just keep blowing soul arrows. I think the only two spells he has is Soul Arrow and Homing Soul Mass, which is honestly all you really need, especially at this soul level. Another thing to notice is that this guy definitely has a planned mage build. Here I'm hoping I could catch his roll with the hand axe, but he's rolling away from me, which makes it harder than if he's rolling in a perpendicular direction. As I'm watching this now, I realize that what would have benefited me greatly is to uh, incorporate more running into this. It would have avoided the spells and most of his straight sword swings. But that's why you record your fights. I still have my dagger out here because I'm hoping I can just backstab him and finish this and I get a parry, but I don't get a repost. <laughs> and if you couldn't tell from the dagger swings, I'm getting frustrated with this person. Nice parry, idiot. I'm thinking maybe I can go for a backstab here, and I do end up getting it, which I attribute to luck more than anything. GG's to whoever this guy was. So next I decide to take a short trip over to Irithyll Dungeon, and this is a place I like to invade every now and again. And uh, this guy's not too bad. I mean, he's probably just a casual player, and he's definitely mashing at me. And I should know better, and I should be able to parry that. But I do a pretty decent job of punishing him. Looking back at this footage now, I see that I could have just finished him here, but I screw it up because I didn't mash into him with my hand axe. And I fall off. <laughs> Which, I mean, is something that happens to every invader now and again, and it does suck. So as I'm getting back, I just put on a quick green blossom so that I could chase him down slightly more effectively. I get stuck in my menu, and I just try to keep on doing what I was doing. Now I didn't notice that he swapped his shield here, and that becomes a problem.
it, it will be a problem. We're both just spacing each other out and doing, like, whatever. He switches to his chime to throw lightning bolts at me to no avail. And I just kind of keep... We just kind of keep trading blows. It's a horrible mess. He chugs, I chug. We go back to the nonsensical game. I go for a terrible parry. And I should be able to finish him off here if I had had my hand axe out. And he gets me with a parry. He didn't parry once this entire time. And on the hand axe swing of all things, I deserved it, honestly. I wasn't playing great. <laughs> Good games. This next toast I thought was pretty good. They seemed like they knew what they were doing, and they were definitely going for a lot of more complicated things uh, and techniques. So it was uh, fun. And different. Nice to break the monotony of other solo hosts. <laughs> Sometimes I fail to clearly hear the sounds of combat in the distance because I usually listen to music while I invade. This guy ends up being a bit of a fisher, but it was still an opportunity to practice against a competent opponent. Here I go for a gank with the knight because I don't know if this guy has way of the blue on or not, and I don't want to deal with that. So I see him backstepping like an idiot here, and I just assume that I could hit him with a firebomb, but I miss. He's doing his staggered R1s. I took most of these invasions as an opportunity to go for more parries, since it's something I hardly do. And we both try to backstab each other, but his misses because I move and I can't get behind him in time. I notice that he's playing unlocked, which leads me to want to play unlocked. If he's turning his back to me to avoid getting counter hit, then I'll get a backstab but he's not really giving me anything to go off of. Now if I were smart, I would just like walk up and backstab one of these back steps because he does them in pairs, but I wasn't thinking about it. He runs around and goes for a quick backstab and screws it up. He's trying to get the backstab, backstab. I swear to God that's what he's going for, but I get the backstab instead and then using my trusty hand X, I kill him. Or her. Or them. That felt pretty good, I admit. Good games. 